All right, so now we're gonna create the night scene. And uh, there's a bit more to it for this one that we need to do because there is no toggle on and off night scenes in Unreal. You kind of have to manipulate a few things to create the atmosphere that you wanted to. This is hard to find. Like I tried finding stuff like this online, I think two or three years ago and I couldn't find anything. And then eventually just got to me trying to figure it out on my own. Um, so, Again, the methods that I'm showing here, um, to a point, it would be good for game engines, but then obviously when we start either adding like the quality increases, like the final gather and whatnot for some of the lumen scenes, whether or not that's effective for a game engine, I don't know yet. We're still playing around with that ourselves here at the studio, but um, I do know for portfolio renders, this is what you want to do. So let's get started. We're gonna get rid of everything that we have over here just like we did before and I'm gonna show you again from scratch how I did everything. So I'm gonna select everything, we're gonna delete it, open up our environment light mixer and we're gonna start creating all of our stuff again. And notice how obviously everything by default comes into play so it looks exactly like it did before. And we're gonna move that into our lighting folder just to keep things nice and organized. Type in post processor, bring that in make sure that that is set to just the world origin just over here and we're gonna move that also into lighting great now we're basically where we're at uh just like with the daytime settings now for the nighttime we're pretty much at the same starting point so directional light um first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our lighting intensity all the way down not to four but this time to one okay we don't need it to be that strong so we're going to bring it down as much as we can. Then we're going to go to lighting color. Now, before, like I said, we had everything that it was supposed to be. I wanted it to be a warm scene. You know, the light was warming the stones, it was warming the brick. Um, it was a nice hot summer day. Now it's cooling down, right? So we want to give it a bit of more of a blue tint this time as opposed to a red tint. So we're going to go and just like before, we're not going to go crazy. We're just going to select a bit of a blue hue here. Just, just a little bit, okay? Not super much. You can take the hex colors here, by the way, if you're looking for them. Next, we're gonna do the source angle. And this is gonna make a little more sense later, but essentially what the source angle is, is it's basically the size of the, the sun, like the, the, the asset itself. I'm actually just gonna first move this because it's not where I want it to be. I want it to be somewhere around here so we can see it down below. Um, so for the source angle, we're going to bring this up to 3.64 and you're going to see in a minute here why. 3.64, okay? You can't see it right now, but I'll show you in a minute. Then the soft source angle, we're going to bring that up all the way to 5. Now for the indirect lighting intensity and volumetric scattering intensity. Now, if you remember before, we didn't make this like all the way, but we are going to do it this time. And it's mostly because of the night scene has a different effect for indirect lighting compared to the day scene. And you're going to, it's going to make a little more sense down the line when we actually get to the night part of it. Now, one of the last things that you want to change, and we didn't do this for the day scene, but we are going to do it for the night scene. There's this thing called light shaft bloom and essentially what it is it's kind of adding a bit of a bloom effect to your light source and now if we do this for the daytime it's gonna be way too strong like it's it right now you can see that is just too much we don't need that much but for the night scene it's gonna be perfect so for now the bloom max brightness we're gonna bring this all the way down and we're actually gonna change this to 0.05 okay you can't really see it um, but it will play an effect um, a little bit later next we're gonna move on to exponential height fog uh, kind of the same thing that we did before here we're just gonna change the fog density just slightly though so um, we could leave it default and that's totally fine but for the scene that I created and what I was looking for um, these are the settings that I used. So 0.2, same as before, but then the fog height fall off, we're gonna make 0.95. Okay, 
you're gonna see that again a little bit more later. And then just as before, we're gonna check volumetric fog, like that. Again, I know it looks a bit bright, but this is all gonna change soon. All right, next is post-processing. And we're gonna be a while here. So before we do anything else, uh, it's gonna be a little bit hard to see what we wanna do if we don't apply the infinite abounds um, uh, checkbox first. So we're gonna check that on. Now every change that we make here, we'll be able to see right away. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into exposure and we're gonna check on metering mode and exposure compensation. And you're gonna change this to manual. And again, just like before, it's a really dark scene. And we're gonna bring this guy up to 10. Bring it up to 10, you'll see our scene looks a lot darker. Almost as if it's getting ready for nighttime. But the temperature is just, it's a little off, right? It it's, doesn't feel exactly like nighttime. Like it feels, you know, it's getting there. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna now scroll down and you're gonna look for, and you're gonna look for color grading. Now this is where I talked about uh, a lot of the changes we need to make to create a night scene have to be pretty manual. So you're gonna type, uh, you're gonna check temperature type and you're gonna check temp. And we're gonna change this value to if you if you change it here you'll see what effect it has on the scene right and as you can guess it we're going to change this to around 3500 to give it that blue hue it kind of feels a little more like nighttime now right next we're going to turn on saturation and this is more just to give our scene a bit more like saturation and more to the blue tones that we're looking for you don't want to go crazy on this. You just want to give it like a tiny little bit of a blue hue. And we're going to change this to 1.3. All right. Next, we're going to move on to shadows. We're going to change the saturation of our shadows a little bit. And this one, we're going to have a bit of a stronger effect, but kind of bring it up here. And this will give your shadows a bit more of a cool feeling to them. We're gonna move on to contrast, same kind of thing. Give it a bit of a blue hue. Yeah, I think that kind of works. And now we're gonna scroll down and you're gonna look for your global illumination settings. And just like before, we're gonna turn on lumen scene lighting quality, the detail and the final gather. And we're gonna bring this all up. All right. You're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go on to our reflections. Same thing as before, we did for the day scene. And then we're gonna to come to ambient occlusion and bring those up. All right, it still doesn't quite feel like what I'm looking for. Um, the, it just, like it's nighttime, which is great, but it's still not really what I, what I envision as like a good nighttime with moonlighting. So now we're gonna move on to our skylight. And just as before, we're gonna change our intensity scale to 0.1. And that's just gonna bring the intensity of the skylight down. And we're gonna bring the indirect lighting intensity up and the volumetric scattering intensity up. Yeah, that's having a good effect. Now we're going to move on to volumetric clouds and just like before we're going to make this 20 20 so that we can actually see that moon and then the max tracing start distance to 300 there you go isn't that a lot better So you've created your scene and let's kind of look at it now. Like, am I, am I happy with, with how it's coming out right now? Well, yes and no. Like it's, you need to look at your scenes and just kind of think, what can I do more to improve it? What can I do more to make it look a lot better? 
and for me right now I'm kind of going through a lot of everything just just kind of skimming over stuff here and I just feel the the intensity of the moon is a bit too much so I'm gonna bring this down to 0.5 there you go that gives me a bit more of what I'm looking for I'm also looking at my stones here and they're not giving me as much of a cold feel that I'm looking for so what I can do is you can actually change the light color of your uh, skylight so if I wanted to have again a bit more of a blue hue a little bit. I can do that. Maybe we'll even go back into the post processor and we'll change maybe a bit more of the tones over here. So for our white balance, we'll actually change this maybe to 3200. Yeah, that's a bit better. With the moonlighting kind of coming into play, you've essentially created your night scene. So it's, it's always good to go back to your scene and um, kind of figure out where you can improve upon things uh, and what, what can change, right? So like this is really nice and all, but I'm pretty sure, and I think it's even worse for you guys, you can't really see anything. Like if you're using this as a portfolio piece, like there's no details, nothing can really be seen that well. I mean, you can see the moon and that's about it. So. Uh, I actually decided that uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more and I wanted a like a fireplace in this area over here so some of the other things that you can do and this is part of the whole lighting uh, idea right so you want to you want to take the person's eyes somewhere and obviously you don't want it going towards a moon so uh, what I decided to do is actually this light for the moon it's it's just a bit too dark so I'm actually gonna bring it up so we're gonna bring it to one just to bring up the scene just a little bit so you can actually see some of the ruins. So I decided I wanted to do like a little fireplace over here just to take the eyes somewhere, you know, when, when someone's looking at this as a portfolio piece or even in a game, right? Lighting is used as a storytelling mechanic on where people should go and what they should do. So uh, what I decided to do is I wanted a fireplace over here. So I went into Quixel Bridge and I just typed in uh, Ash so if you're typing ash you're gonna get these charcoal piles that you can you can use right so if you scroll down you'll eventually get something like this charcoal piles and this is obviously what it sounds like i'm going to use it as piles where the the charcoal just kind of like lays flat and this is exactly what it sounds like right it's just it's just a pile, it's going to be a decal that I'm going to put on the ground and it's just going to be where some charcoal from burnt wood would be. And then I'm going to type in firewood. Let's see what I get. And I get some, some stuff, but it's not what I'm looking for. Like these are not burnt and here's some burnt stuff. So then I went and I took this burnt firewood pack. I ended up bringing it all into Unreal and uh, I created an actor for it. I created some fire in Niagara and the stones that I made, I put them in a circle and I ended up just placing it in the scene here. So I'll just show you what I did. So, so I already placed this stuff in the world, but I'm just gonna show you um, how I did it essentially. So first thing I did is I brought in a point light, right? And the point light, because it's fire, I wanted it to be a bit warmer. So six is a good, is a good light for me. And we're gonna just make it a little bit red. There you go. Then I'm gonna bring in my, uh, the decal, which is the ash that's gonna be at the bottom. And then my fire, my actor. And once those are in, you will see now what a massive change it makes to the scene. So if we come back over here, or maybe something like this. Look at that, isn't that cozy? And there you go, that's a, that's a night scene. It is important that if you're creating night scenes for your renders or for your games, you need to have a uh, different kind of light source to take the eyes to, right? Because now my eyes are there and that's cool and all and the rays are having an effect, but I'm more focused on what's going on over there. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. That's how you create a night scene in Unreal Engine 5, at least how I figured it out. There might be other ways to do it, but this is the best way that I've kind of uh, piece things together. So 
If you guys like these, um, like I mentioned in the previous video, like, share, and subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, and leave a comment on what you guys like to see more of. Uh, I am doing these little short form YouTube tutorials on, um, on Unreal Engine as I'm learning things, as the studio's learning things. Uh, we do have more devlogs coming out soon. But until then, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.